All right, welcome back. Today we're going to cover the fundamentals of the gripping system. Now I've went ahead and I've built all the logic we'll need so I can show you how it works. Uh, but don't worry, we're gonna go over all the blueprints step by step to ensure that we're all on the same page. So let's open this up here and go over the core concepts. Now, the controller is just going to send out a trace here and if it hits an object, it's going to ask that object to be interacted with, right? It's gonna to try to grip it. So if I hit this cube, it's going to just follow my controller. These are the default responses here. This is an actor, it doesn't have any special uh, settings to it. It's just going to get picked up, follow what my controller's doing, and then simulate physics when I drop it. Now, if you remember, the cylinder that's on top of this cube is actually a VR slider component. And this one is going to tell me, if I can hit it there, it only moves up and down. So even if I try to move left and right, the object is telling the controller, no, I only move up and down. That's all I do, all right? So let me show you that in the blueprint here. If we open up the Grab Me blueprint, we can take a look here at the VR slider. Right now, it's only moving up and down on its x-axis here, right? So that's here on the details panel under VR slider component. You can see its slide distance is 100. Let's bump it up to say 500 just to show you there. So now when I try and grip it, whoop, should be able to go much higher. Look at that. And let's say I wanted to move it on the y-axis as well. Let's say 200 on that. Now it moves to the side as well as up and down, right? So it's completely up to the object, the component. They're going to say how they move in the world, how you interact with them, or if you can interact with them at all. So let's close out of that. Let me give you another example here. There are actually several new classes that are included with the plugin. So if you search for the classes for grippable, you'll see we have a lot of options to choose from here. We're going to keep it simple today and just go with a grippable static mesh actor. We're going to create that and name it, say, BP grippable. And I'm going to open that up, add an actual static mesh here so we can see it. Let's say a sphere. Okay. So if we take a look at the class defaults here, we've got a lot of settings under this VR grip interface. Okay. Um, there's actually even more hidden down here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my good. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot of settings. Okay. We're not going to go into each one of them right now. Um, but you've got some basic stuff like deny gripping. So if you have this selected, you won't be able to pick this up at all, right? It'll deny you. It won't. It'll say, "Hey, I don't want to be moved around. I don't want to be interacted with. Just leave me alone." Um, you got to allow multiple grips, so the left and the right controller can grab it at the same time, and simulate on drop. So that's by default. That's checked so that whenever you drop it, it'll simulate and it'll fall to the ground instead of just like staying out in the air. And um, let me give you an example here. Let's pull it into the world. Oh my goodness, that's that's massive. I'm going to leave it massive. Screw it. I don't care. The bigger the better, right? Um, let's just make sure it works here. Look at this. Boop. All right. Yep. So by default, this is kind of how everything will work. It'll, it'll follow you around. It'll move. It'll go. Now, if I say deny gripping now just that. now I'll hit it and I'll register that I got it but it won't allow me to grip it super simple and if I say don't simulate on drop we'll just hang out in the air yep I can pick it around do whatever but then as soon as I let go of it we'll just chill I'm not gonna simulate okay so let's turn that back on. I don't like things just hanging out in the air. And yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so now let's take a look at how this all actually works. I'm gonna open up my character here. And you can see it all starts with the motion controller's trigger. So whenever that's pressed, we're gonna go ahead and run this custom event, the attempt to grip from trace. We're gonna pull in the right motion controller because I wanna be able to do it for the left and the right. So we need to be able to pull that in. We're gonna be able to do this on both left and right with the same events, same functions. And once we release the trigger, we're going to drop all the grips that we have. So anything, any object in our hand, we're going to drop it. 
So let's take a look at the attempt to grip from trace. This is just a custom event that we're calling up here whenever we press it. Custom event that just has a new input, we're calling controller, it's a grip motion controller. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find an object. So we're gonna run this trace. We're gonna trace from controller. It's just gonna pull in the grip motion controller. So it's gonna be either the left or the right. And it's gonna send out a hit result. Whether or not it hit anything at all is the Boolean and the actual hit result is the object that was hit. So let's hop inside this function that I made here. And you can see really we're just pulling in the controller so that we can get an idea of where the controller is, which way it's facing with the forward vector, timesing that by say 500 for now, that's how far it reaches out. If you wanted it to only reach out really close to the controller, you could change it to something like 100. Um, and then do a line trace by visibility. Then we're gonna take the return value from the trace. We're gonna see what the hit was and whether or not we hit anything at all. Return it out so that we can use it to say, let's not do anything at all because we didn't hit anything. Or if we did hit something, let's pass in the hit result to this next function, attempt to grip, which will bring in this hit result and the controller again so that we can grip something so that we can interact with it. So inside this function here, we're going to first break the hit result, and then we're gonna to check to see, is it a component or is it an actor, right? We're gonna first check a component. We're gonna see if that component implements the VR grip interface. And then if it does, we're gonna go ahead and grip it. So this is the magic node that actually handles making this all work. And in order for this to work, you need to have the controller as a target. Again, that's the grip motion controller that we've been pulling in since the beginning after the trigger and you need whatever the object is that you want to grip. Again, here we're pulling in the hit component from that hit result and the trace. And then you also need an offset, right? So you need a transform value. We're just going to get the world transform of this component and work from there. Now, if it wasn't a component or the component didn't implement the interface, we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and try and grip the actor. So we're going to grip the entire actor. We're going to check first, does the actor implement the interface, right? That VR grip interface. And if it does, we do the same exact thing here. We're just going to pull in the controller. We're going to pull in the object and we're going to pull in the transform of the object. Okay. And then we're going to grip it. We don't really need to worry about the other parts of this node right now. That's the minimum that you need to get it to work. Now, if it didn't implement interface, I still have this in here. This is just grip object. You notice it's not grip object by interface. It's just grip object. So I'm grabbing something that doesn't implement the interface. Now, this is just to be able to show you that cube with the slider on top of it. Um, but normally you probably wouldn't use this uh, because it gives you a really nice way of being able to say, these are the objects that I want the player to be able to interact with. And these are the settings that those objects have. And then these are actors that don't have the settings up. So I don't want them to be able to grip it. If it doesn't implement the interface, I don't want them to be able to interact with it. And then you can have those out in the world and not worry about them getting moved around by the player. But just to be able to show you guys how it works, I went ahead and implement it right now. Um, let me show you here. If I did break this and we were no longer going to um, grip an object that doesn't implement the interface, then you'll see what happens here when I try and grab it. I hit it, but I can no longer interact with it. I can still interact with the slider, so I can still move that around. And I have no problem moving the sphere around too because they both implement the interface, okay? But the cube, I can no longer grab the cube. Oh, bye, sphere. Okay. So let's hook that back up real quick. And now I can grab it again. Okay. Simple as that. Now let's talk about dropping the objects. So we're going to go back to the event graph, go back up to when it, the trigger is released. And then this is a function that I made called drop all grips. Again, we're calling in the controller because again, we can use this with the left or the right controller. So we need to pass that variable in. So here in this function, we're going to grab the calling controller. First, I'm gonna check if we gripped anything at all, has grip objects. If we don't have anything in our hands, there's no, no use in going through any more logic. But if we do have some objects in our hands, I wanna get all of them. It'll return me an array. And then for each one of them that I have in my hand, I'm gonna drop all of them. So if they implement the interface, I'm gonna drop by interface. And if they don't implement the interface, I'm just gonna drop them regularly 
and you can see the difference here between these nodes. Because drop object by interface uses all the settings in that interface for the object, you don't need to specialize. You don't need to say, hey, yeah, it's it simulates or it doesn't, right? But if it doesn't, that's why you do need to set this, okay? So if I say, don't simulate after I drop it, if it doesn't implement the interface, then you can see what will happen here with the cube is it'll just hang out in the air, right? It won't simulate, it won't return, it won't do any physics crap, okay? So you have to manually say, yes, simulate, okay? Cool. Now it'll simulate again. All right, get out of here. So again, that's why you probably wouldn't be using this. You'd use the drop object by interface, and then you can go into your object and say, hey, you know what? This one, under the VR grip interface settings, I don't want it to simulate on drop. You know what? I want it to hang out in the air, right? Boom. And that's what's so powerful about being able to change the object settings whenever you want this way. Now, something else to note here is that in multiplayer, it has been noted by Modern Troll that it is uh, better to use get all grips instead of get gripped objects for dropping them. And that way you can get the grip ID by breaking this element here and then dropping by interface with the grip ID instead of the object. Okay, so it's it's apparently buggy, just so you know. That about wraps up this video. Later we'll look at more advanced uses of these. We'll look at the different sliders and dials and stuff that's included. But until then, see you in the next one.